Start with these Pentagon leaks. 21 year old Air Force Guardsman, Air National Guardsman Jack Teixeira, is, has been formally charged with leaking classified documents from the Pentagon. He made his first court appearance in Boston today, where the judge ordered him to remain in jail one more week until at least until his next hearing. Well, also, uh, we know that he was picked up yesterday again at his home in Dighton. These are some sketches from inside the courtroom. As he entered today, John, he was in shackles. As those charges were read, his father reportedly also there and shouted, I love you, to which he answered, me too, Dad. Officially, the charges read like this. Unauthorized detention and transmission of national defense information and unauthorized removal of classified documents and defense materials. He is believed to be the leader of an online chat group where these documents were first posted, and they lived online for months before anyone knew about it. Now, he first joined the Air National Guard in September of 2019, according to the Defense Department. His official job was Cyber Transport Systems Journeyman, and then he was promoted to the rank of Airman First Class. Um, again, he was swarmed by media today. The family, as they exited the courthouse, they were obviously uh, quite emotional inside. They declined to comment following their son's court appearance. Let's get you out now to James Rosen, tracking the latest details into us at this hour. He joins us now live outside the White House with more. James? Bianca, good afternoon. In charging Airman Teixeira uh, with the unauthorized removal, retention, and transmission of classified national defense information violate, violations all, at least allegedly, of the Espionage Act, federal authorities in court papers unsealed this morning said they interviewed on Monday another user of the online chat room where classified information, initially in the form of text, began appearing back in December. It was in January, according to this unnamed witness cited in the unsealed FBI affidavit, that Airman Teixeira moved to posting actual photographs of classified documents. According to the witness, Teixeira, quote, had become concerned that he may be discovered making the transcriptions of text in the workplace. So he began taking the documents to his residence and photographing them. I want to emphasize that this was a deliberate criminal act to violate those guidelines and rules in the same way that if you locked your front door and somebody came into your house and took something, you, you followed your procedures and you locked your door, but somebody went in your house and took something and put it out on the street. That's what we're talking about here. Classified material. In the court papers unsealed today, the FBI said internal logs showed Teixeira having access to the materials posted online, that agents used billing records from his social media accounts to track him to his physical address, and that the unnamed witness in the case positively identified Teixeira from a photo lineup that included Teixeira's driver's license photo. The Bureau said Teixeira held a top secret security clearance and that on April 6th, the day this case was first reported by the New York Times, Teixeira used his government computer to search classified intelligence reporting streams for the word leak. Seemingly worlds away, President Biden this morning toured the sanctuary of Our Lady of Knock in County Mayo, strolling a basilica that featured a mosaic depicting the apparition. It's a Catholic pilgrimage made previously by the likes of John Paul II, Mother Teresa, and Pope Francis. Now, on the one hand, the arrest here removes some of the political pressure that had mounted against the Biden administration in the clamor for some answers in this extraordinary case. On the other hand, the prosecution of Airman Teixeira promises to keep the contents of the leaked materials in the news, all without answering the main question that now looms over this affair, namely why the defense secretary and the other top brass at the Pentagon only learned of this case on April 6th, when according to these new charging documents, the breach first began occurring back in December. Bianca. That timing is certainly suspect. James Rosen live for us at the White House. Thanks, James. With us now to talk more about this, senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation and Trump's former Deputy National Security Advisor, Victoria Coates, also with us, former U.S. Ambassador to NATO and former Special Representative for Ukraine, Kurt Volker. Great to have you both here. Good to see you, John, and hey, Great to be with hey you. Kurt. Thanks. Great to have you both here, uh, especially hey, to talk about this story. I mean, I'm struck by this question uh, to both of you. First to you, Victoria. We're giving top-level security clearances to 21-year-old Air National Guardsmen right now. I remember when it was a big deal that when we were sending guardsmen and women to Iraq, when they're, you know, that's not really their job. How do we get here? Yeah, I think I think you're identifying a real a real sort of mission creep that's been going on with both overclassification, so that someone like this requires a top uh, top secret security clearance, and then just handing these things out. 
willy nilly. And I think I think this hopefully is a strong wake up call that we need to get after that system, make sure that these these leaks don't happen again and that there is no normalization of this kind of spillage of classified material. Obviously, Kurt, your reaction to the age and also some of the information that leaked was exposing perhaps that U.S. troops have been operating in Ukraine um, as a former ambassador to NATO. Some say that's a big concern, as we've been told no boots were on the ground. Right. Well, it, it's misleading that we've been told no boots on the ground, but the reality is that I'm quite happy that we have a special forces uh, contingent at the embassy. Uh, I think we do need to track where the assistance that we're giving to Ukraine is going. I think we need to advise the Ukrainians, and I think we need our own eyes and ears on the ground. So I'm actually reassured that that's the case. As far as the damage of the documents goes, we didn't learn a lot new from this. Uh, it could have been much worse. Uh, but what we really see here is, okay, the Russian military is in a shambles. We knew that. Ukrainian military is low on ammunition. We knew that. We have a poor assessment of the Ukraine's capabilities. The Ukrainians know that. I think they are better than we give them credit for. If I was worried about one thing after reading all of this, it would be that we get a great amount of intelligence. We have super data collection, but our analysis is often wrong. Interesting uh, take on this. And Victoria, you know, obviously, I don't know if this was, if this tells us how far behind the, the curve the government was here, but how did the Washington Post and the New York Times identify this guy before the FBI can get to him and arrest him? Yeah, that's that's certainly an embarrassment, as is the fact that this stuff was lingering about in, in various chat rooms on gaming platforms for months before it was tracked down. So I think the other thing we need to get after is what kind of vulnerabilities we have in this online gaming world. Uh, it's something, you know, as, as parents, I think we all need to be concerned about, you know, what kind of data, data harvesting is going on here, what kind of information is being shared. You don't think about these things as a national security threat, but they're emerging as such, and it's something we need to take very seriously. Well, President Biden also has this taxpayer-funded policy trip based, uh, billed as an ancestral homecoming for the first family. Here he was speaking yesterday in Dublin. So thank you all. God bless you all. Let's go, let's go lick, lick the world. Let's get it done. So thank you all. God bless you Do all. Do either of you know what he was talking about there? <laughs> I can only I can no only idea. guess he meant go go take the world by storm, but but lick is certainly a curious choice of words. And this this whole trip is just optically terrible. Uh, you know, I'd welcome Kurt's thoughts as well. It's 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 a terrible time, and it's it's just not a good look. Maybe he was thinking about ice cream. All right. <laughs> The one thing on this trip that I think is significant or, or that has a substance to it is making sure that there is continued political progress in Northern Ireland. This is something that the United States has played a big role in over multiple administrations. Uh, we helped broker the, the Good Friday Agreement. Uh, it comes at this time of year around Easter. And so to show continued interest in that and support for that so that you don't face a return to violence in Northern Ireland, that's a positive thing. But the rest of it, as you say, it's it's uh, it, it's just a visit to uh, a nice place. Uh, and with his prominent family by his side, I mean, they're not putting Hunter, uh, you know, on the sidelines. He was very proud of him to call him up. There was that clip where he said, Hunter, stand up. Um, Victoria, your thoughts on Hunter going and then also, you know, sort of being a go between when Biden didn't really understand a question from a young boy. He had to kind of play uh, interface there. It's, it's really incredibly tone deaf, Bianca. I mean, we, we've had reports over the last day or so that, that Hunter Biden's firm, Rosemont Seneca, uh, was, was actually soliciting the government of Ireland when Joe Biden was vice president for, for business. So this is a place where he has tried to capitalize off his family name. Now he's flying in on Air Force One, taking who knows what meetings uh, on the sidelines of, of this trip where we don't have a very tightly buttoned down schedule. And, you know, it just it looks terrible. And I think the American people would like to know why why the president of the United States was having an elaborate banquet at a castle in Dublin last night. You know, how does that serving our national security interests? And it stands in stark contrast with what Chairman Xi is doing in China right now. Sure does. Family vacations that so many Americans uh, will not be affording as well due to our historic inflation. So many optics here that are just mm -hmm. negative. Victoria Coates, Kurt Volker, thank you both. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.
All right, former President Trump set to headline the start of the National Rifle Association's annual meeting. It's today, 4.30 in Indianapolis. You can watch it here. But this comes after Trump spent nearly seven hours yesterday during a second deposition. We told you about the legal battle.